What's going on, Jigsaw Land? So you probably see that vitamin D makes a lot of headlines, right? We hear all the time that we're deficient in vitamin D. Statistics have shown that 42% of Americans are deficient in vitamin D. But we don't always look at is that there's a multitude of other things that could lead up to an ultimate vitamin D deficiency. See, I don't know if we're just not spending enough time outdoors or, or what. Thing is, there are so many other steps that are precursors to vitamin D having an active form within the body that I think we need to take a very realistic look at that. See, one of the things I want to focus on is magnesium. Magnesium plays a huge role in the conversion of vitamin D from its inactive form into its active form. As you well know, magnesium is involved in over 300 different enzymatic functions within the body, and by and large, in America, about 68% of the population is deficient in magnesium. So we have a 42% deficiency in vitamin D, and we have a 68% deficiency in magnesium. You can start to do a little bit of preliminary math right there. You can see that we have two deficiencies and they might ultimately lead to the same end result, which ends up showing not only low levels of magnesium, but low levels of vitamin D in its active form as well. So let's take a look at what actually happens. You see, we know that magnesium sort of counteracts calcium. Calcium being excitatory, magnesium being relaxing. So we have this competition going on. And calcium's not bad, calcium just belongs in the bones. It doesn't necessarily belong floating around through the bloodstream, causing a bunch of chaos, okay? It can contribute to plaque, it can contribute to a lot of other negative things when it's in the arteries. So the job of vitamin D is to help that calcium go to the right place. One of the jobs. Vitamin D is actually a hormone, so it's involved in a lot of other things. But without magnesium, vitamin D doesn't go from D2 to D3. So what does that mean? it means that you end up having a deficiency in vitamin D3, which means that that calcium doesn't get into the bones as well, which means that magnesium has to spend more of its time counteracting calcium, which means you become even more deficient in magnesium, which means you become even more deficient in vitamin D, and it repeats this vicious circle over and over again. You see, magnesium stimulates a hormone known as calcitonin. It's the job of this calcitonin to draw calcium out of the soft tissue and out of the blood, and ultimately, into the bones. So you see, magnesium plays a lot bigger of a role when it comes down to hormone function to helping calcium get in the bones than it's given credit for. Most people think magnesium is just for relaxing, but in the reality is they work harmoniously together. So vitamin D inhibits that calcium deposition within the arteries and magnesium converts vitamin D into its active form so it can actually do that. So I'm not saying don't take a vitamin D supplement. I'm not here to tell you what to take and what not to take, but I am gonna say that if you're showing up the vitamin D deficiency, it may not be what you think. It might actually be more of a magnesium issue. And quite frankly, you're probably a little bit safer to test it out from the magnesium front than you are to test it out from the vitamin D front because you wanna make sure that you're talking about the chicken and not just the egg. Or is it the egg and then the chicken? Either one. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on Jigsaw. And as always, make sure you click on that link and check out MAG-SRT and the new Scottsdale Magnesium Study that proves that MAG-SRT increases serum magnesium by 22% and increases RBC magnesium by 30%. I'll see you on the next page.